the City Council has approved this program unanimously, which means the city now owns this program. Uh, if they approved it unanimously, the city owns this program. And I'm just happy to be the one that uh, they put the face on to initiate and bring people together to launch the program, okay? Uh, we do have some individuals here uh, this morning who played a significant role in what we're doing. This is called Small Slash Minority Business Initiative. And this issue has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, city Council members have been dealing with it. Uh, I came on board with the city as an independent uh, contractor in February. And I set out, in addition to doing other things, this would be the first major initiative that I, that I push. And it was not a very hard uh, push uh, because the city council uh, and the mayor had already been dealing with this issue. So before we, I explain to you exactly what this program is about. Bas basically, it's an informational program. Uh, this is not a job fair. This information this morning, and you're going to enjoy and appreciate what we're trying to do. So now, what what is this program about? What we're going to do this morning is give out information uh, for you, business folks, small business folks, uh, minority business folks. We're going to give out information. Now, once we give you the information, then of course you have to then respond to the information to try to get into business. Uh, we're going to, uh, 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 before you can play in the game, and I just use play, uh, you know, I don't mean to emphasize how serious this is, you have to know the rules. You have to know the rules how this is done. So we want to expand opportunity this morning. We want to expand opportunity that everyone out there, once you know what the rules are, feel that you can get and participate in getting business from the city. City business, not private business, city business. The city is limited in what they, what, what, what it does, but even in that respect, you want to be filled as a level playing field. You have an opportunity like anyone else to get the business that meet the category that you're in and the kind of business that you do. Because what we have to do, we have to start collecting data, you see, to know where we're headed. Now, some of you very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, acquainted with what we're trying to do and been in this business a long time. This is not an overnight process that you, that we gonna have this program completed overnight. Uh, the Nixon plan that was developed in the 1970s in Philadelphia, mainly in the construction business, is still going on. The plan that, that was ex established in Atlanta, you talk about Atlanta, it was established under Maynard Jackson, when he was mayor, 35 years ago, it is still being developed. The program under Bradley in, in Los Angeles still being developed, so our program will continue to be developed. The city council and the city has established a goal, not quotas, a goal of 30% small and minority participation in city business. Without any more talk from me, the first person who's going to speak is Steve Jones, who is the department head of general services. And they, what they're going to do, tell you the kind of business that that department deal with, the kind of contracts that they have, the kind that they have to bid out or threshold non-bid, and how you get on the list. That's basically what they're going to do. Uh, Steve Jones. Thank you, Judge. 
Uh, as Judge Price said, I'm Steve Jones. I'm the Director of General Services. General Services is a, um, a cabinet position that has six departments under it. Fleet management is one of those departments. Fleet management is the, we procure all of the vehicles for the city of Montgomery through outside vendors. Um, that is a bid process. If you are in the automotive business, we put specifications out for certain types of vehicles that we're looking for, and then we open that up to anybody that is in the river region uh, to bid on those vehicles. There is a state bid list that comes out for vehicles each year. Uh, we have the ability to just grab a vehicle off of a state bid list, but what we like to do in the city of Montgomery is we like to give the opportunity for the local business owners to bid on that vehicle, and if they can match or beat the state bid price, then we'll do business with them. So we like to keep the funds in the River Region and in, in Montgomery specifically, but in this area. Also within fleet management, we do automotive work on vehicles. We sub out or farm out an awful lot or various types of work, be it transmission work, body work, brake work, um, any type of work that is done on a vehicle for those of, those of you that are in the automotive business, be it the repair business or the body work business, we have a process to where we bid those or we send those jobs out. We don't bid those, we don't put out bids or requests for proposals for that work. We get vendors that want to do business with us on a list and we systematically go through that list one after the other handing out the business. Um, other things that we do is we purchase fuel for the city of Montgomery. That is a bid process, so if you are in that business, I'd be glad to explain to you how to get on that list. Um, building maintenance is another department that uh, I'm involved with. Building maintenance is, we do the maintenance and construction and repairs for 297 buildings we have in Montgomery. So we bid out some work. For example, if we have a community center that, or a press box to be built at a school or a ball field, we would put out a bid or a request for proposal for that job and we would bid that out. That would go through the bid process. Other jobs, if we just have small individual projects that need to be completed and we have the funding and don't have the manpower or the time to get to them, then we will give those out to people that we have on a list of responsible vendors that we have used before. So those are the two processes with building maintenance. So that's your plumbing, your electrical, um, your HVAC, those type of professions we use there. And then uh, we have some grass cutting jobs that we do farm out. Uh, the cemeteries fall under us. And then we, we maintain the cemetery grass for the city cemeteries. And then we maintain the properties that the city of Montgomery owns that have grass on them. We go out and cut those and there are times when in the growing season that we can't keep up with the amount of rain Mother Nature has given us and we will farm that out as well and that is just on a list of people that we have that we choose to, uh, to do that. So that's pretty much it. Well, um, I guess today is a good opportunity. Uh, Anybody that wants to do business, those businesses that I just mentioned, um, when we do this breakout session, I will give you uh, my name and phone number and then the individual department head of those departments. And you would just call and say that you would like to be put on a list and uh, for, for that various type of business. Well, we are now um, Chris Conway from Public Works. Chris. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I'm Chris Conway, director of the Department of Public Works. The Public Works Department is comprised also of six departments. Uh, the Sanitation Department, Street Maintenance Department, uh, two Engineering Departments, and the Inspections Department in 311. The principal offices that uh, deal with outside contractors, uh, uh, first is our Housing Codes Department. We uh, have an abatement list, which are the people who cut the grass, uh, junk litter, trash, those types of things. That list is an is approved by the city council 
and uh, once you are on that list, then each uh, two weeks when the various uh, lots are approved for abatement, those are bid out and the low bidder is selected uh, to perform uh, those projects. So if you're interested in, in getting on that list, you need to contact the Housing Codes Department. Obviously, I'll be available in the breakout session. Uh, and once you are uh, giving me your information, if that is approved by the City Council, then you'll be available uh, to bid on that work. Uh, the other main uh, thing that we do is we administer contracts that go above uh, the public works, Alabama Public Works Law of $50,000. So we administer those contracts for the city of Montgomery. So we support the various departments in the city, whether it be the Parks and Recreation Department, whether it be the Facilities Maintenance Department, whoever contacts us and lets us know that they've got a project that's going to be over the $50,000 threshold is, and is going to require a general contractor, then we will assist in bidding that project out. So uh, the requirement is uh, pretty straightforward for that. Uh, you do have to hold a general contractor license. You can contact our office and we can put you on a bidder list and you will be notified anytime there is any type of work that you are interested in uh, bidding on uh, if you meet that type of work. Uh, and we also uh, farm that out to our various plan room services around town to rely upon them to get the word out if you were on a list uh, for notification from them as well. So uh, the various types of work there would be, like I say, it could be anything from uh, stadium seating at Patterson Field. It could be uh, a, a walking trail bridge at Lagoon Park. Uh, it, it, it varies fairly widely in terms of what types of projects we might bid out, but like I say, it generally falls into that above $50,000 threshold. It does require that you have a general contractor's license, and that's how we would get engaged with you. But within that programming, we do other stuff, and we have contracts and services. Basically, we have two types of bids that go out. One is construction, and uh, 50,000 or more goes through the engineering department. We'll put the specs together. We'll, we'll do all the background information. They'll administer the contract or the bidding for us and administer the contract. Most of the repairs under 50,000 is done by the building maintenance department. And once again, if there's an air condition that went out and they can't get to it, they will handle getting uh, bidding, getting quotes, or whatever for replacing that air condition at one of our facilities. The other type we do is services. Uh, now some of these services, you have other requirements, but we, we do, we're busy some years on construction, some years we're not. Uh, we're finishing up a $131,000 project out of Crump Ball Fields right now uh, and uh, that's a minority architect minority contractor uh, we're fixing to do a bridge out at lagoon park that's 108,000. Uh, that's not a minority but it, uh, it's, a liber uh, it's a construction company gc uh, in the future there's possible other contracts coming up they're on the drawing board they're on the division but they're not out there yet contracts coming up in the future. I'm Robert Smith. I'm director of planning here at the city of Montgomery and um, my responsibility here at the city is basically to uh, regulate the use of land and property citywide as well as uh, plan and program everything from federal housing development uh, dollars, economic development dollars, emergency shelter dollars, transportation planning dollars, and highway safety uh, improvement dollars citywide as well as uh, in, in the river region. And I also have the responsibility of the, the management team over at the city's public transit system, the Montgomery Area Transit System. So I've got all of those particular um, areas kind of under my umbrella. Um, I've got about a $2.2 .2 million uh, annual budget that my department actually operates on. Um, 
that's basically a combination of city general funds as well as federal dollars to basically carry out the, 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 the planning and programming operation that we do uh, citywide. We've got about 34 employees. Um, and, and, and again, most of that money is for the, the administration of the actual department. Um, I've got about six divisions of, of labor. Um, th that first division is basically long-range planning, which basically handles uh, comprehensive long and short-range planning citywide, um, as well as particular neighborhoods, and also applying for federal and state uh, federal grants to actually go about implementing uh, those actual plans that are that are planned and programmed for citywide. Um, th that second division of labor out of six is is what we call land use planning and regulatory control. Uh, that particular division basically is responsible for regulating and controlling um, what anybody that owns land or property can and cannot do with that particular land uh, uh, citywide. Um, that next division that I also have is um, Highway Traffic Safety Division. That particular division is one that is responsible for all of the, the a lot of the highway traffic safety campaigns that you see going on um, in the city and also in the, the county and the river region. If you've ever heard of Click It or Ticket or, or uh, seat belt safety or driver safety campaigns, drunk drunk driving campaigns, this particular division is the one that's responsible for that and, and is funded through federal funds from the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Uh, next division is community development, um, which is basically uh, the division that's responsible for uh, planning and programming all U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development funds um, that are spent here in the city of Montgomery. Uh, we, we get about $2.3 million in uh, housing and urban development funds um, as an entitlement uh, community here in the city of Montgomery, and we use them for, from everything for, from community facility improvements, economic development projects, how, housing rehabilitation, both new uh, housing rehabilitation, new construction housing um, for, for sale or for rental, um, and also down payment assistance, uh, community service projects, and emergency shelter uh, situations for persons that are homeless. Um, I also have a transportation planning division that's responsible for planning and programming um, tr uh, federal transportation improvements um, throughout the river region. That's not just one here that's based at the city, but it's a, it's a three-county process that's, that's uh, planning and programming transportation improvements. Um, in that process, um, the, the, the local elected officials control about four to five million dollars uh, that they plan and program for improvements, such as if you've ever seen construction going on on roadways like Madison Avenue or um, Vaughn Road or Carter Hill Road or any, any particular city local road or uh, federal roadways like the interstate system 65 and 85 and the, all of the boulevards north, south, east and, and west. Um, that's all planned and programmed through that particular process. Um, in addition to that process, the state of Alabama and the Federal Highway Administration is involved and um, they actually, uh, we program about 26 to b between 20 and 30 million dollars worth of improvements on an, on, a, on an annual basis, and um, um, and so you, you you basically have a combination of local control and state control that's actually programmed for particular work that can be done by general contractors. Um, and also, my last division is Ge Geographic Information Systems, which is our basic computer mapping component uh, division that handles all of the, the mapping and database uh, work here at the city. Um, as far as particular projects that, that we have, um, we, we just approved our 2015 HUD action plan that basically has um, you know, about $2.3 million worth of project improvements that, that range from all of those categories that I mentioned, and I'd be more than happy to, to, to do some one-on-ones and, and talk about particular projects that we have um, that, are, that are coming up in the next uh, fiscal year. But I, I'll just, just name a few. Um, one example might be we've got a $250,000 um, housing rehabilitation project that'll, that'll come on board in the next fiscal year. Generally, what we do with that with that particular 
um, process is we grant the, we grant the, the funds to a nonprofit, and that particular nonprofit is responsible for um, taking applications of individuals that are interested in housing rehabilitation, and, and once those individuals are 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 selected, then contractors are actually paired with the individuals that um, have the individual housing rehabilitation assistance, and so there's some opportunity there for uh, small licensed general contractors to get work uh, in in that regard. Um, and again, you know, there there are various other uh, improvements, such as community center improvements that are done, and and those will be. Uh, handle because they they will be over that fifty thousand dollar threshold that Mr. Miller had had mentioned and Mr. Conway had mentioned and those will be in my department. Um, the, the department main number is six two five two seven one two, and I don't mind giving you my direct number. My direct number is six two five two two one eight. If you call me, I will take your name and your information, and I will I will get you on our list so that. Anything that comes about in that's generated out of planning department, you'll automatically get that. You get that information, and if you're interested in in bidding or quoting or or you know performing that particular work, you you have the opportunity to to do so. All that work you see going on downtown, let me dispel something. Uh, on Dexter Avenue, that is not city money. That's mostly private business, but occasionally there's government and private enterprise come together to work on projects. Mac McLeod is over development for the city. McLeod, I'm in, I work in the development department. Uh, our primary function is to dispose of real estate that the city has acquired uh, over time. Uh, we have a good number of properties uh, around town, uh, particular downtown. Uh, one of our biggest uh, opportunities when I came on board was to work on the properties that were acquired by a grant from the state on, on downtown Dexter. Uh, those properties, many of you that uh, grew up around Montgomery as myself, remember that being a viable area of town and then it just died out in the last 25 years and we were fortunate enough to be able to get developers through an RFP program to come in and take those properties and to turn those into um, future development either. Some of them are <clears throat> retail as and commercial as well as uh, living units that are being built downtown. Uh, in addition to that, some of the areas on Maxwell Boulevard, for instance, is Bell Street as we recall it. Uh, you know that those were a lot of uh, car lots. Many of you remember the businesses. The city was able to assemble all those properties together and then turn around and, and again put out an RFP and a developer came in this building those 150 something apartments up there. Our primary again our primary job is to dispose of it, but it's also to make sure that what's done with those properties are in our highest and best use to benefit the city of Montgomery, primarily to create jobs or, re or resident, improve residential units. Uh, the, uh, it, because it's private uh, companies, we're not able to dictate to them as to what they, uh, who they hire, but what we have been doing is in our development agreement, we put specific agreements in place so they've got timelines to work with, but we put in there that they, we encourage them to try to shoot for around 70, 80 percent local contractors, and if they hire an outside general contractor, we encourage them to use local subcontractors. Now again, there's, again, all we can do is encourage them to do it, and so far it's been real receptive. Uh, we ha do have a couple of local developers working on projects, so you know all that work is going to be done local. In addition to, to those uh, uh, efforts that we do in our department, we do periodically have individuals that will come to us that are looking for a site, and if the city doesn't have a property or a location somewhere and we know of individuals that are, have properties for sale, we try to match those together. But that's, uh, that's what our primary function's been and now we're in the process, especially on these projects downtown, of monitoring those development agreements to make sure that they finish the projects on time and as originally agreed. Thank you, Judge. Good morning. Uh, as Doug said, my name is George Galloway and I will be working with Moore Ziegler <clears throat> uh, as part of the implementation of this initiative. And our role in this is the department heads have told you some of the requirements uh, that they have to face in terms of letting contracts. And one of the requirements uh, that you're going to have to face 
is that you're going to have to be capable, you're going to have to be able to complete the contract should you be selected. And what Je uh, Doug and I are going to try to do is select certain companies in our program as part of the pilot to assist them in becoming capable, legitimate, and able to do the contract. Because of the budgets that are so tight, the city or any other budgetary agent cannot afford time or cost overruns. So if you're working on one of these projects, uh, it's going to be imperative that you complete the project on time and in budget. What we're going to do is select a certain number of companies. We're going to vet them, make a site visit, select them to be in this program, and we're going to assist them in business development, which is the new buzzword in Washington, by uh, filling in the gaps where it is necessary that you have insurance. Uh, we're going to work with uh, the judge and work with the company to try to make sure that you have the necessary insurance. If you don't have bonding, we want to work with you to try to get you bonded so that you are covered while you're doing the job. Uh, your equipment to make sure that to complete a job that you have the necessary equipment, the necessary staff, and the necessary expertise to get that job done. Those are the things that we're going to be doing. We uh, have a sign-in sheet over here, and I have some of the profile sheets that I will lay over there. If you're interested in becoming uh, considered for our program, we ask that you complete the um, vetting sheet, and uh, we will take a look at it. And if you're selected, we'll contact you. We'll come out and visit you. And we'll uh, get you in the program. Uh, another thing that we're going to do is the matchmaking. You've heard some of the department heads say that they deal with general contractors. We, have over the years, have uh, created relationships with many of the general contractors who work in and around the region. And our job is going to be matchmaking the small business with the general contractor. And as uh, the judge has continuously stated, this is a process. It won't happen overnight. But we try to build the relationships because the critical part of all of this is the trust. And if we can get a small business, minority business, married up with a contractor who will be willing to be part of our program, and to assist you in the expertise that they have. And that way, when they get the contract, that they would consider you. Another thing that we do is we monitor the jobs. And once we take, uh, see what the job is, the companies that are in our program, we will take them after they've been vetted it. And we will, um, we can't offer anything, but we can recommend that if you're not on the list, that you get on the list, and then we can have a relationship with the department heads saying, we're working with this company, we wish you would let, take a look at it.